Jupiter Broadcasting presents this show in mega stereo sound. This episode brought to you in part by GoDaddy.com. This week on the Linux Action Show. Work out your trigger finger and get ready to play Windows games on Linux. We've got the tips for you to frag from the desktop you love. Then we list off the top 10 new features of Ubuntu 11.10 and Fedora 16. Plus so much more. Oh, this week on the Linux Action Show. And welcome to the Linux Action Show, Season 18, Episode 4. My name is Brian. That guy is Chris. Hey there, Brian. Check out this potato. Okay. It runs Linux. Wait, what? Yeah, now, uh, here's the details, Brian. This is uh, coming out of this project. Every Linux... Wait a minute. The title of that article says, Hackers Successfully Install Linux on a Potato. Yeah, here we go. Here that we go. is the best headline I've ever I'm, read in I'm, my life. I'm locking you down right now. It says, uh, this is coming out of Amsterdam, uh-huh. and it's called uh, LinuxOnAnything.nl. And uh, it's the first time an operating system has ever been exta- installed on a root vegetable. The potato doesn't have a CPU, memory, or storage space, so it was quite a challenge, says John Pilist of a Linux on Anything group. Oh, yeah. Obviously, we could couldn't use a large distribution like Fedora or Ubuntu, no. so we went with damn small Linux. Yeah, yeah. After weeks, the group got you the Linux would. kernel specifically modified for the potato loaded, and were able to edit the small text files in VI on the potato. This is pretty exciting, Brian. I got full links to the story in the show notes if people want to check this out for themselves. Uh, they ran it off a Kingston USB thumb drive. Okay, so I contacted these guys, you know, just to get the, uh, just get how maybe they got this done, and they were not available for contact they were immediately. They not available for content, contact, but, yeah. uh, you know, Brian, you see, at this 20-year mark here at Linux that we are happy to be sitting in right in the middle of today, uh, it, it just felt like now, this, this is, can't this be is, denied. This, this is the, this this is the is, fate this of is Linux. This is truly amazing. I mean, we've talked already. Last, last episode, we talked about how like, great like Debian compiles for x86 yeah. and ARM yeah. and RISC and yeah. all these different processes. Mm-hmm. And it's really nice to see Debian-based distributions yeah. uh, building cleanly on Potato as do you well. Want, do you want to see what I, I've got Linux running on? I, I have it right away. Okay. Absolutely. So, uh, for you audio uh, v- uh, listeners, I'll be right back. Chris is going to go get something. So this right here, Brian. Yeah, this is my oil heater. See? Yeah, and I successfully you, got cool. You, you, you compiled Linux yeah, it on, got it on the oil heater. <laughs> yeah, it's running on the oil heater right there. So. That's beautiful. Yeah, so this is this it's is my little, Linux. It's a little dusty. Well, yeah, it's because it's just been sitting in the garage. There's also some schmutz on it. Yeah, well, I don't know. I know exactly what that is. Yeah, it's from the studio. That's Jeremy's fault. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy got a little... Uh, we won't go into that, Brian, but that's my Runs Linux right there. <laughs> oh, fantastic. You know what? What, B-Man? I'm so glad we have Linux on a potato. After last week of <laughs> Hewlett Packard declaring, or sorry, they're not Hewlett Packard anymore. They're just like HP now. Yeah. Uh, declaring that they didn't want Linux on cool things anymore. Uh, it's nice to see that some of my favorite, favorite edible objects are yeah. Linux. Yeah, absolutely. So, thank you, people in the Netherlands. Uh, I would like, if you could, to get it running on an onion next. Yeah. Because then we could have potatoes and onions, and we have really, we have really. Almost the makings of a great well, stew. What and I like, awesome. what I like about that, B man, is too, is if you overclock your CPU, you get a fried onion. And fried onions are delicious, right? <laughs> so we should mention we are shooting this Unless show. Unless you water cool it. That's true. That's and true. then you get a stew. Yeah. <laughs> we should mention we're shooting this episode early, so like if you know all heck breaks loose and we don't mention it on Sunday or something like that, no big deal because we record it on Sunday, but we'll pick it up. Uh, we'll pick it up next week, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And because uh, uh, we're going to PAX this weekend. It's the Penny Arcade Expo this weekend, which has very little, if anything, to do with Linux. It doesn't, but we're kind of going anyway. Yeah, so right. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun, and we're going to cover a bunch of other stuff. And Jeremy's getting a bunch of stuff for his show. I don't want to talk about this anymore. If All we're right. not talking about Linux on potatoes, I want to talk about Danica Patrick over at GoDaddy.com. Mm-hmm. Because here's mm-hmm. the thing about Danica Patrick. Yeah. She is going to make eyes at you. She does. And, you know, they even brought her out on Thursday Chris, for us stop again. talking. So, Go sorry. back to that picture. I don't want you to talk while Danica's looking at me. <laughs> okay, Brian. But also, Brian, you can, when you, Danica when you, wants me to tell you something. When you purchase something, you type in Linux and you check out in 10%. This is actually kind of neat. This only applies to probably a few of our, our viewers out there, but it would be really cool for me. Uh, so uh, if you want to resell to like clients, maybe some hosting services or something like that, sure. GoDaddy has like this whole front end where you can set up and charge resell people. Resell things actually pretty yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. 
So uh, we've got a, we've got an offer. And it's only valid to the end of August. So August 31st is the last day you can use this. Yeah. Uh, but if you use the code Linux30, you get 30% off the reseller plan, which means it costs less for you, and you can charge whatever rate you want to your clients. 30%, and, it, it, and it's yeah. good. Yeah, for perpetuity. Like no, well, let's, uh, let's see here because this is only a limited deal. It's thirty percent off any reseller plan for any number of years. New customers only. That's the right. only gotcha. Right. So if you sign up for a new yeah. reseller account now, yep. you get thirty percent off. That is a really cool That's idea. A really good. Like deal. if you got a client that wants you to do a website for them and you're going to host it, this is a great way to go. You don't have to manage the server directly, but you can still make a profit off I know. it. It's yeah, great. So. Uh, Grr. Eight. And of course, you can always use our codes Linux to save ten percent at checkout, or Linux twenty to save twenty percent off shared hosting. So fantastic! All right. So all of that said, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say that you have some fancy, fandy, dangled Android application for me that's going to change everything. I what do. Is it? You are what actually is, right. What, what Android app you, are you going to get a whip out? You're not is even. It, is it an amazing you're not even Telnet client? You're not even gonna, with no. fancy compatibility. But we did. Get, I asked you for that last. You week, did, and you didn't. You're not following through. I, it's because I didn't get a chance to try one. I still love you. We, all right, thank you. Not, thank you're you. not following through. We did get a lot of good comments though, on Google Plus. None of them actually worked. Oh. I, I want to say this actually straight up. We have the most awesome community. I know they were like I, all I over it. Man. I'm like I'm like guys. I need a Telnet client that does this, this, and this. Here's the here's the BBS you connect to. Here's yeah. the URL. Go in, play this exact game, do this, and tell me how it works. I got just dozens and dozens. Dude, we got and a ton dozens of, of yeah. people. Oh, yeah. it out. It was really cool. Everything. They're like, hmm. Well, I'm gonna try this client, but if I tweak the configuration files on it, it almost sort of works. And <laughs> I'm like, you guys are awesome, but nobody yeah. was able to come up with something for yeah. me. Yeah. But yeah. they tried so hard. You guys are awesome. I got something that's kind of neat. It's not an exactly an app pick. It's more like a repo pick. It's called uh, F-Droid, F-Droid, and uh, you can find it at f-droid.org or a link in the show notes. And what it is, is it's more like um, an apt repository software manager Wait, for what? Android. What? Yeah, yeah. It specializes in free and open source software for Android. That's why I wanted to talk no, about it on the Linux the Action Show. I thought marketplace already did, though. Like, I thought that was already part of it. Like, what, what does this give you? This is, this is more like a traditional repo where users can upload so apt or yum or whatever yeah, it's, it's got a whole front end system to it and it's got repositories and you can you can they also have an online browser so you can browse what some of them are uh, on there here like uh, really? a lot of open source apps so but you know a lot of really just really great free software That's available for android stuff in there. yeah yeah absolutely and there's a link to it. i didn't put it in the show notes cuz i'm a dummy but it's got a, it's got a pretty nice ui oh it is in the show notes it's got a pretty nice ui so you can you can browse it and what's cool is you can just add your own oh. repos as community as community builds it up oh now i'm sold on this this is great so so yeah so basically you, you throw this on there and then developers can throw up their own repository yeah. if they want it get completely around the application marketplaces mm -hmm. amazon or google or mm -hmm. whatever and you can still get constant updates yep that's great, and it's uh, it, it's special. It's all it's all uh, FOSS. Well, at least the repository that I will link to is all uh, FOSS software. So that's great. You can get it; and it's free, and there you go. All right, B man, I love it. Speaking of free stuff, your Linux app is a great free. All app. right, all right. So uh, we're talking about a lot of games today. Later on, we're talking about like getting Windows games mm. to run on Linux through all the different things. And I thought, you know what? I got to pick a game. As Linux pick today has got to be a game. So I dug deep. I'm like, what would be epic? And it's got to be Linux native. Because yeah. we're going to talk we're about yeah. Windows games yeah. on Linux That's later. Fair. So I'm like, I'm going to do a native Linux game, but something epic and classic. So I went I like with that. Open TTD, which is a open re-implementation of Transport Tycoon yes. Deluxe, which is one of my favorite games of all times. If you've never played Transport Tycoon, you need to play this game because it is so much fun. It is a 2D isometric style game. It's similar to Railroad Tycoon. Honestly, it's it's got some similarities to the, like, the Theme Park Tycoon and Roller Coaster Tycoon series in that it's a tycoon simulation-y game. But Transport Tycoon Deluxe is so great because it's so epic and large and yeah. there's so much to do and there's so many ways to beat the game. What's really cool is not only is this, is this a complete open source re-implementation, they've continually improved upon the game. Mm -hmm. The game gets a little bit faster, the AI keeps getting tweaked, and they've done a couple of cool things that didn't exist before. Oh, really? First of all, now, you can play the game with the original Transport Tycoon Deluxe file. So if you own the CD, you can I use the artwork that. from the original. Or they have completely free versions of the artwork that's basically redo redone versions of the artwork available yeah. on OpenTTD.org. You can download the sound, music, artwork, And their everything. new stuff can be up to 64 times the size of... Yes. Of the uh, original of stuff. Of the original art. And so that's pretty fantastic. So you don't need to own any of the original closed source version. I do, so I can use the original artwork. That's but, cool. But honestly, there's no reason to, almost in my opinion. The second thing is... Multiplayer? Multiplayer. <gasps> 
You load up oh. the game. I kid you not. Imagine playing Railroad Tycoon or Transport Tycoon or any of these games in a multiplayer way. Oh, yeah. Where literally. And here's what's great about it. It's like playing a Quake 3 deathmatch. You load up a multiplayer. You click refresh. You get an internet-based list, which, Chris, if you go to the screenshot there here, you, you see it. Yep. You see how many people are logged in, yep. how many companies are created within the game, which you create your own company. Check that game, out. Which version of the game client is it's using, which every, every version is always the same right now. 1.1.2 is like the version. So there's no reason to have anything else. And it's great. So you log in. You're like, I, want, I know who's playing what. So if mm -hmm. I want to play with just my friends, no big deal. It's like, you know what? You don't have this map. It auto-downloads the current so map nice. for you. That is so nice. Connects you into the game. You play the game in real time with other people. So it's like a long strategy simulation Quake 3 deathmatch only in a Tycoon game. It is Awesome! It blows out of the water. That's so cool. Any simulation-y type game that exists at all. Nice. Like, not even, not even a little bit of competition. <laughs> like, like, like the current version of SimCity. Yeah. Great game. Yeah. Can you click a button and play giant multiplayer real time competing on the same map against a, against a bunch of people? I don't, no. I don't think so. Can you do that with Civilization Five? Not really. No. It's a turn based, and there's a bunch of other things. This is the only way to nice. really do it, and the Linux client is glorious. Well, this is a great pick since all the stuff we're talking about today is all Windows games. So awesome. So this is this is a true testament. And how much does it cost, Brian? It's furry. That's what's awesome. I, I think the way I said that came out sounding furry. But oh, I mean, I well, it's free. furry, too. I mean, free. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's great. It's awesome. And here's the killer. Oh, whoa. Bit. Oh, okay. It runs so good on my N900 <laughs> I know that's and what N810 said. MAMO tablets. It runs so good on my Linux desktop. Oh my it goodness, so Brian! It runs so good on my Linux-powered Lenovo S10 3T tablet <laughs> with touchscreen support. What? It works so damned well. That just makes everywhere. you want a table flip. You know? Seriously, though, you can play multiplayer that's awesome. on an N900. That's awesome. Connected with... <laughs> I could be I could be on a bus, dude. I want that on a touchpad. G3 playing That's with awesome. Chris oh. sitting in the studio on his laptop. That is that is how games should be. Seriously, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. great, so so great. Anyway, uh, one of my favorite games. One of my favorite games. Yeah, so I had I had to give a shout out to them because honestly, I hadn't so far, and just just awesome. All right, B man, that's that's a great pick, and uh, links to that and. All of Brian's previous picks, as well as my previous Android picks, are in the show notes. So if you'd like to get those, like if you're loading up a Linux box, that's a great way to go. And if you're loading yeah. up an Android phone, these that's, lists are, yeah. are these awesome. These lists are the great way, because yep. honestly, the Android marketplace is full of garbage. <laughs> it, is like, it has like 8 billion well, and, terabytes. And let's not lie, the repos sometimes have a few misfires in them, too. So you got to know what you're getting here. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, these lists are epically great, yep. especially the Android list. Because oh, I mean, seriously, oh, the Android list is great. There it's, you go. It's so pretty, Chris. Thanks. Well, yeah. it's really thanks to Mad Joe for keeping Oh, yeah, thanks, Majo. Yeah. Uh, that's what I meant. All right, B-Man. I well, meant Chris did nothing is what I was trying to say here. Wait a minute. Wait. I tried uh, the apps. That's where you say let's do the news. Let's do the news. <laughs> What's new in the news this week? Oh, right, Chris. First story on the docket this week. It, actually, I don't know. It's all up on your... Yeah, your all right. Oh, I got it, Brian. I got we, it. We got to, in the future, not switch things around no. like that. It, yeah, I it, thought it you were going to lose a lung, yeah. and I want you to stay healthy for the rest of the show. You know what? I do, too, actually. Yeah. It, it would be really okay. nice. Well, you, you, yeah, let's I'll just come, go, like, going right. forward. You go ahead and do your thing. I'll yeah, do my okay. thing over here. Right. You, you read over, factual information. It's been five plus years. We got to try it. And I'll sit over here and make snarky comments. Okay. I like that. All right. Perfect. So the HP Touchpad becomes a low-cost Ubuntu tablet. That's so great. I know, right? Right? So great. This, so this okay. So first of all, did you hear that a few people that have gotten these ninety-nine dollar HP Touch Pads, they arrived running Android? What are you talking about? I am not essing you. This is a. This is. Go look it up. They're Qualcomm uh, builds of Android, like two dot two dot three. I'm serious. You know, you're screwing with me. I am absolutely serious. Why? Well, but you'd ordered a WebOS tablet. It's like for te like a couple of them were testing units, and they were like still in inventory. Was well, this just some of them? Have happened? Yes, only a couple. Like, okay. like there's like a handful. The like, people have videos and screenshots online and stuff, though. But uh, it kind of gives some insight into huh. how little they must have actually ran WebOS on the touchpad. If maybe, maybe. this was like some sort of QA build. Crazy, Anyways, uh, that's pretty funny. But uh, so the and of course the next step is now to get a better operating system on there, like 
a, a full, a full Linux, Linux desktop. distro. Awesome. And uh, this guy, now I don't know how widespread this is, but uh, here, I'll pull up the screenshot. You can see it. It's, it's It looks great. And, I, and there's video out there. There's a bunch of video of this happening. And it, it, its speed isn't that bad. Like, it's it's not, I mean, it's not like, a, it's not even like a netbook speed. Wait, what's he playing right here? He's playing something right here. I can't, I can't remember, I can't what, remember what that, that is. is. But anyways, uh, oh, oh, that's a VNC. That might be, I don't know. But anyway, this is a really cool start of something that could really turn these tablets, these, these touchpads into something much more valuable, even if WebOS doesn't go anywhere. I love the idea, and I think I think this really drives home what we've been saying for like two seasons now, is we need a device like this yep. that is like what the PC was for the desktop market, an right. open, standard platform you can load open. any OS on. And That's what we need. This touchpad, while being a, a probably considered a, a failure, maybe will be the first thing that sort of wedges this home for people and says, if you make something that consumers can load whatever OS they want on, they will buy it. Yep. It's we'll see. So basically, yeah, this is just running a, a, a Chirrut of, yeah. uh, of, uh, of the Linux kernel. So Chirruted Debian and then loaded in Ubuntu. Hmm. And, uh, you know, you can from there kickstart XFCE or what have yeah. you. It's, it's actually pretty cool. Basically what it ends up with, if you watch the videos, is you got a little tiny web, well, WebOS app. You, I you click a button and, and you chur rooted. You click another button, you launch an X term, and then from the X term you can start XFCE. Right. And so then you start an XFCE session. So it takes a couple of steps. Yeah. But if you're a nerd, you can do it That's in like all right. two seconds. That's all right. And it runs great. And people, you know, full apps on there, G edit, there's repositories <clears> to grab stuff from. It's pretty cool looking and I really want to try it. And this got me to the point where I'm like, man, <laughs> yeah. I've got to buy an HP touchpad <laughs> yes. for ninety nine bucks. Can't find them anywhere uh, now. Although word is there's still gonna probably be some more shipping. Totally out of luck. I got boned on that one. I'm sorry, B man. No, it also I should have like, just bit the bullet. And as soon as I saw it for 99 bucks, I should have just ran down to Best Buy or Weber and grabbed it. I guess so. But I, I didn't Seesaw. think I really wanted one, and yeah. I just, you yeah. know, yeah. All right. So this next story is pretty neat. about that now. When's the last time the Linux Action Show talked about GIMP? Actually, you mentioned it when you were talking about yeah, doing like your two episodes. Ago. Yeah, like yeah. roadside. But you know, I'm saying this here is different. Like just in terms of oh, what like GIMP's news. bringing. In terms of news, what's it bringing? Changes to GIMP. This sure. is actually pretty cool. It's been a long time, actually. Uh, GIMP is working on a single window mode, and it's actually out in the 2.73 development release. It looks release. good. It does look good. I'll yeah. I'll pull up a screenshot of it here and show it to the video folks. But uh, the other thing now, just to, as a little uh, side note, so I don't go too far before I forget to mention this, is while it's not in this release, the other thing they are working on is OpenGL acceleration for GIMP. Yes. Yeah. And there, it's on like the next release. But okay, so uh, if you're watching the video version, here is a screenshot of the new sort of it all put great. together uh, window. What it, what it really is, it's. Do uh, you remember that GIMP shop, Brian? Yep. This reminds me a little bit of GIMP shop, but a it's lot. actually, uh, I think, a little cleaner. And it did a great job. Also, uh, if you're a little familiar with Photoshop's layout, it seems a little more better contained well, than I, Photoshop I think, is. I think that's a lot of it because GIMP has for a long time been. A good alternative to Photoshop for most people. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it may not have all of the filters and effects that Photoshop does, but for most people, it'll get the job done. Yeah. Even if you're, uh, even if you're a graphics artist. Yeah. I mean, it's really great. The problem is, it's just got this stigma of, oh, GIMP can't replace Photoshop. So now what they've done is they've gone, you know what? Let's just create a UI that's going to feel comfortable for Photoshop guys to look at, and they'll notice now all the it, cool features that GIMP has it had for years. It does seem like it's like the, the, the big... The big elephant in the room that they've just been avoiding for years and years, hoping people would adapt. Please yep. adapt, just adapt. And, now, and they, they, they just, they're biting the bullet and they're just making it happen. And I think that is great. Yeah. Because honestly, I prefer the single window UI myself. I, do too. I just live with the fact that GIMP has 80 bazillion windows floating and I can never quite get the ones I want up in the front. Yep. And I, I can't stand that about the GIMP. I love everything else. So the, this makes me thrilled. The uh, GL, the open the open CL accelerated GL stuff that the work was, was worked on, yeah. which will be coming soon, was I guess part of a Google Summer of Code project that got completed. Oh, really? So that's neat. That's cool. And uh, I'll look forward to GIMP getting that. Cause I wonder what parts of it are actually going to be accelerated. I think it's probably filters. That's cool stuff. Yeah, I yeah, know. It's That's like grueling. blurs and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe not the stuff you use the most, but still pretty grueling. Right. <clears throat> now, let's talk a little bit about Fedora oh, 16. Oh, good. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fedora 16 Alpha has hit B-Man, and I wanted to just mention a couple of features. Now, I'm reading over the releases here, and, of course, it depends on what your focus is for, for Fedora, but there's a couple of interesting things. I didn't even realize this about Fedora, but they've been on Grub 1. A lot of places, a lot of distros, not all, but a lot of distros have gone to Grub 2, and now Fedora 16 is making that uh, that jump. So that's good. That's good for like LVM support and the things like that. The world just changed. 
the other thing that's really kind of nice is they're extending their system services management application where you can control what boots up and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, desktop updates, you're going to get, of course, KDE 4.7 and GNOME 3.1. No, you're not. What do you like? You like, right? No, okay, all right. Uh, see anything else in here? No, no, no. Cloud updates. Fedora now includes a number of. Play boy, Brian, Brian, wake up. Brian, we're doing, right, the, we're show. doing the show. We're doing the show. We're doing the show. Uh, I'll put links to it in the show notes. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, I didn't realize I'm doing the show. Now, uh, do you want to know? Okay, all right. So that's Fedora 16 Alpha. Would I get your attention with some top 10 Ubuntu 11.10 features? Are they as exciting as revving to a version of the bootloader that everyone revved to two years ago? <laughs> Well, That's I don't know. Great. I mean, uh, I mean, this isn't good. Like, you know, a whole new version of uh, libjpeg that loads JPEGs twelve percent faster that Fedora did in one of the previous releases. But uh, this, you know, it ranks up there pretty high. Soft, uh, Softpedia put this list together. Since we give Fedora some love, let's give some Ubuntu some love. Uh, number ten, the new software update center. Here's a new oh, screenshot of it. Like it does look really good. You know, I want to give actually a quick shout out to the the Ubuntu guys. So, what, so I've had my software, and you know what? I that I'm not going to plug my software right now. If you know me, you know what software I make. You're oh. going to go buy it right now. Okay. Uh, because it's because it's super awesome, uh, but it, you know, we've been in the the software center since uh, December. Since December, yeah, that yeah. sounds about right. Uh, and when we got we've been Radical Breeze, not Linux Action. Yeah, me, you know, me and my partner with Radical Breeze, we we've had our software illumination. Whoops. I mean the software I make in the software center since December. Now, when we got into it, the the software center application itself was really bare bones. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you could technically buy and download our software from it, but that's it. Like the ratings weren't there. There was no ratings. There was nothing, nothing. And from my standpoint, from the developer standpoint, there was not even a way to submit an application. There was not a way to track purchases. There was not a way to track downloads or updates. There was not a way to submit new updates. There was nothing. So you're saying it was. New. It was, dude, so new. <laughs> and since then, it's really been about, what, seven months now? Eight months? Yeah, okay. nine, okay. Eight or nine months. Oh, yeah. And yeah. in that time, they've added the ratings. They're now overhauling the UI for this to make it look a lot cleaner. And on the back end, they're putting together a really nice developer control panel so you can actually... Oh, that's I can nice. now track my sales and downloads like you can on a normal fully grown up store and you know they're trying to make it so you can you know manage your updates a little easier they're doing a great job now so I just wanted to so call that's, them that's out some, that's key good stuff good job guys I'm gonna sneeze absolutely well you know you don't have to sneeze into the mic or did you it was right there okay alright okay so let's keep talking about uh, our, <laughs> whoa B man whoa you gotta you gotta you gotta focus last time you had a sneeze attack you went for like five minutes Oh my gosh! All right, let's keep talking about. It. So that's the number ten feature. We got that was crazy. We got to the first one. All right, yeah. All right. Anyway, I just want to uh, give a shout out because that was pretty awesome. Number nine, new simplified Nautilus. Okay, yeah, that's okay, cool. Whatever. Uh, easy access to settings. Number eight, uh -huh. seven, new Libre Office. Oh, that's a surprise. Uh, new Alt Tab, which I've played with a little bit, and it's nice. Okay. Yeah, that looks number okay. Number six, number seven, uh, Firefox seven, not going Chrome. Interesting. Uh, number four, Thunderbird is the default mail, no longer being evolution. I'm uh, I'm uncertain about that one, but okay. Number three, awesome backup tool called Deja Dupe, which Deja Dupe's pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, I and, like Deja uh, Dupe. That's cool. That's that, there. That is a really good move. I'm good. They have that though. Uh, yeah, number fine. two, B man improvements. Look at this. Actually, look at these. These are actually really great. Unity is looking a lot better. I Unity like this stacking. Tons better. Uh, lots of Unity Launcher, the, the Unity Dash, is Unity Panel. Way nice. Improvements to Smart Application Finder when dragging different files. Unread counts on uh, on Mozilla Firefox, Mozilla Thunderbird, Empathy Pigeon. Uh, smart Search in the Dash now. Uh, these actually, are, these are probably. Uh, I think my review, my review could be summed up with Unity when we first got our hands on it. Is 1.0 and it needs a lot of fixes, but ev I think if they get Mega if they get a lot of stuff in every in every release for a little while, they could, could have be, something. It could be solid and fast. This is some of that stuff. Yeah, I this mean, is. We'll we'll see if it's enough to make me want to use it full time. But mm -hmm. honestly, for so far, it looks a lot better. And the number one feature they're claiming, which is one we've already covered on the Linux Action Show, is the new uh, login manager, the new dis the new display manager for. Uh, for uh, which is uh, for Ubuntu, which is based on what Light DM is that what it was? I forget. Yeah. But uh, it's nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's nice. So and it's go. really mega themable. All right, so it's really easy to make you look. Because it's all it's all HTML JavaScripty, so it's easy to make it look like whatever. It's I nice. Want, I wanted to end on a positive note and talk a little bit about Thunderbolt. The uh, Intel technology that's the um, uh, sort of like the replacement to FireWire that Apple's shipping on a lot of their machines, and that the new Intel, yeah, the new Intel server motherboard ship. Uh -huh. Now, as a video person, a, a 20 megabit bus sounds pretty great. Attached to a PCI Express bus directly is very exciting, and uh, so 
in the, the, the applications for the server world and for video encoding are, are just massive. And so I'm really happy to know that Intel is directly working on Thunderbolt drivers in the Linux kernel called LAD. And they'll be applying that software to the kernel, which will also support, get this ready for this, okay. networking. So you could do Thunderbolt to Thunderbolt between Linux boxes, oh. 20 gigabit networking between them. I'm okay with that. That'd be hot. Yeah, that'd actually be pretty yeah. cool. Because there's no, like, Thunderbolt devices. You no, can not yet. But there's, like, there's like one hard drive that costs $8 million for a one gig drive or something like that. No, it's, it's, like, stupid. Well, it's that, it's that, it's that, um... Is it the Lacie drive Yeah, or something? it's got, like... It's crazy expensive. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. This, this, Thunder, this Thunderbolt technology is... Is is really something because because it is attached to the PCI Express bus. Which is there's nice. already uh, I think it's Sapphire, the ATI Radeon vendor, yeah. is building an external GPU enclosure that is a Thunderbolt port, just a Thunderbolt wire and power out the back that you plug into any machine, and it adds a, that ATI video GPU That's to the machine. Right, because it's got enough bandwidth, so you can. Dude, Why it not? has enough bandwidth that you could then daisy chain discs and display off of it too. I mean, it's crazy. It's really something. That's crazy nice. Um, I love that. Now, of course, USB we'll three. We'll see if anyone actually builds anything. Yeah, I know that's it. the thing. USB three point supports already working great. I believe I don't have any USB three point devices, no USB but I think devices. Linux had that like quite a while ago. Probably. Uh, so uh, over Linux. I'll just end on this. Intel is putting a lot of effort behind uh, uh, Thunderbolt. I think. Apple is the first vendor to ship. Or Lightpeak? Lightpeak Light Peak isn't technically this. I don't know if it's technically the same thing, because Lightpeak was based off fiber. Thunderbolt's uh -oh. based off copper, so it can also transfer power. That's cool. I think. Uh, but uh, Sony's latest line of laptops are going to uh, ship with Thunderbolt, and uh, Intel's latest line of motherboards, motherboards that are going to start shipping are shipping with Thunderbolt ports. So it could start taking off. Probably customized Thunderbolt ports. I'm guessing every Sony's company is. will have a different shaped yeah. Thunderbolt port. Sony's are uh, like smaller, and yeah, yeah they're, they're little, different. They'll probably call it iThunderbolt. <laughs> I.Thunderbolt I yeah. or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sony. Yeah, exactly. All right, B-Man. Well, that's all the news for this week. I love to play video games. I love them very much. Oh. Unfortunately, there are many video games that do mm. not come out for Linux. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, I get a lot of questions. Oh, so much. How do I, especially because I do Stoked. It's how do you play Star Trek online on Linux? Under, under Linux. So, yeah. so we want to take a moment. And now I know, I know, guys, I know. We're gonna talk about playing Windows games. Under Linux, it's a little sacrificial. Though. And playing them well, though, this is this is the oh, goal okay. here: is how do we yeah. do it to where the experience yeah. is as good or Which better is not, than the Windows? Maybe we should start there. That's not that, that is not going to be the case with all games from Windows. No. Sometimes I get emails where somebody's like, I try to do this and this, and then when I get to the login screen on the game, it, it just gets locks all up. Funky. And that, and sometimes there's just some things you just can't get around, and that's just the nature of the beast. What can you do? But hopefully some of the tips we'll cover will get you pretty far yeah. for most games. Most games. I got... I got a uh, the games that count. The, the more popular a game is, and the, yeah. the longer it's been out, yeah. the, the more likely it is to run really well under Wine or the variety of other environments. I want to maybe start by giving a shout-out to probably the, the series of products, not the specific product, but their products for forever that I've used now, probably since... I don't know. I don't know if they've been around since the year 2000, but if they have, that's probably how long I've been using them. Uh, it's, it's We've crossover. been talking about them as long as the Linux Action Show has yeah. been alive. So, and, yeah. and they have a specific product called Crossover Games now, where, where, they, where they specifically focus on game compatibility testing, like Star Trek Online. Yep. And the, the, uh, the other thing they do now is they also have a Mac version and Linux version, so you can play some of the same Windows games on the Mac with this yeah, tool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Crossover... While it is commercial software, it's about $25, I believe, for crossover games. What they really focus on is an end-to-end -end solution. You put the disk in the drive. Installs. It installs. It goes through all of the things. Like, what they'll do is they, they have a very, very careful approach not to mess up the wine config. And so if they know, okay, Star Trek Online or whatever game it happens to be, it works best with an IE7 HTML rendering backend for the login screen. Yeah. It works best with this particular version of DirectX. It works best under an XP guest instead of a Vista guest. Hmm. And it creates what's called a bottle. And this bottle is all of this self-contained stuff. And it installs all its own set of dependencies and its own HTML render and all this stuff in a bottle. And then it installs your app into that. 
And nice. then you can manage these bottles independently, and you can reboot bottles and things like that. I love bottles. It's like VMs for wine almost. And all of they really are is just folders in your home directory that are just self-contained things so you don't mess stuff up. That's really nice. Yeah, and you can, you can template bottles and things like that. So that's one area where crossover is really cool. So that, means, that means like if you do a uh, game where it does updates like Stowe does, the STO update that might update a DLL on the system won't break any of your other games. Oh, nice. Which is so, so, yeah. So really, I mean, if you're running just straight Windows, that's a huge problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, this is actually, games break other games all yeah. the time. I mean, I mean, I wish that actual Windows did that. Mm-hmm. That would be fantastic. And, it, and they're asking the chat room, it will create a bottle automatically, or you can add stuff to existing bottles. So I have, uh, like, just some, like I have a tools bottle. I do like that they call it bottles. I know, bottles. wine nice. bottle, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the other thing where they really where your money kind of goes for is they have a really honest compatibility center, um, where where you can you can browse by apps by compatibility yeah. by what other people have rated. There's an entire community here, and then now, they give is them. This, is this related? Now this looks very similar in a lot of ways to what uh, the app HQ yeah, does over yeah. at uh, or, or the app DB th- over at Wine I HQ. I think the Wine HQ guys might have taken their cue from this, but I'm not positive. Cause Cause the, well, the, the, this has the been around wine, forever. Well, the wine guys think that App DB okay. has been around forever too. And it they, could be. They, Code Weavers is and they, really. And they still use bronze, silver, and gold as the rating. They system. do. You and know, and platinum. Code Weavers is. Code Weavers is super good about the code that they work on wine, so they may be interacting very tightly. That'd be very cool. Um, but you, so you can go in here, and so if there's a if there's a Windows application, now crossover games will run other things because it's really just wine, but it's it's tailored to run games. Right. Um, but you can get their crossover Office product too. They'll do other stuff. Uh, this isn't an ad for them, but I'm just letting you know, like if you want to do things like Photoshop or iTunes, yeah, we these don't, might we be. We don't earn any money off of this. This is no. just really cool. Uh, and here's like Eve Online. Um, it's silver. Here's Excel 2000. It's gold. You know those, so you can kind of get a feel of stuff. But they they don't they won't come up and blow smoke up your butt and say, oh yeah, yo, that'll work great. That works fine. No problem. It they oh, there's very well. First of all, it's user moderated. Right. So it's it's what the users are experiencing themselves, and then there's forms where people can like apply that. tricks. And this isn't even so bad to check out if you're just using Wine itself, because sometimes people put the tricks that they had to use to get stuff running in here. See, so this is a great database for that, That's too. really nice. I like that a lot. So, that, so you get that. You get the compatibility list. You get the bottles. So that's all really kind of cool. The other thing they do is they do updates. So, and again, back going back to Stowe, Stowe had a, a season four update. You know, a big MMO patch where they, like World of, War, World of Warcraft. So they just this. downloaded a gig of content yeah. like onto your machine. Well, guess what? They changed a little bit in the login screen, and uh, the IE8 rendering engine quit oh. quit working properly. And took the Code Weavers guys about four or five days, and then they pushed out an update profile for Stowe really? to the Code Weavers game. And so then you could apply that, and it would it would swap out your HTML rendering engine to the correct rendering engine. So now the game started working. Now, again. Did it did it like alert you that you needed to download it, or was it something you just keep, you needed to keep looking? I, for? I looked it up because my game quit working, but <laughs> then I saw the notes in there, and then I and it's all done. The whole the whole issue tracking is also done in this compatibility database. So you it's all you're exposed to like the issue the developers are working on and where they're at in it. So I saw, oh, okay, they've identified there's an issue. Oh, good, they think they have a fix. And then they then they gave, like, here's the manual way to fix it if you want with all the commands. And then about a day later, they pushed out the profile to do it. And it, So it's a really nice, like, peace of mind system. If you've right. got, like, one or two games you just want to always play, it, it, it'll cost you a little bit of money up front, but it really works long How term. much does it cost? I think it's, like, $25, $35. Uh, I've bought... That's it? I'll check. That's not bad. So crossover, the, the uh, standard one that runs kind of like just general apps is 50 bucks, But the crossover games edition is thirty nine ninety five. Oh, that's not bad. It's not too bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, it's, uh, it, also, it also gives you uh, six months of support. So if you have like Quicken and you want to run on Linux and it's really important to you and they say it'll work... And if they say it works and it doesn't work, they will honor their support. I mean, honestly, I think I've been, I, I don't know how, for how long, but I think I've been buying for them for at least 10 years. So, you know, I, I, would, I would give them an, an endorsement. And it's been worth enough to keep coming back. I bought every version. And then, you know, if I, if I didn't get the upgrade for free as part of the, of part of the deal or That's whatever. That's pretty cool. I mean, because I, I tend to use Wine a fair bit mm-hmm. uh, to run, you know, one game or another. Though most of my games I all play at DOSBox because I'm an old school kind of guy. Yeah. But, you know, I go to, you know, the WineHQ.org. I go to their app database. I yep. look, I look everything great up in there. And, you know, I look to see, you know, what sort of configuration tweaks I need to do to make individual things work under just stock wine mm-hmm. and I run into continual problems where I have to have one version of wine or another version of wine for different applications. That's where the bottles are so really nice. That bottles would be mm-hmm. great mm-hmm. to have. Uh, 
Yeah, that is kind of tempting. Honestly, it's almost worth a thirty bucks just to have. Well, that. and there's the free trial that runs for like fifteen days or something like that, so you can it's full functionality. And honestly, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than buying Windows. <laughs> That's for sure. And the thing I really like is like you go, you say, okay, I'm going to load this app, and then it just it gives you just a menu of Windows applications, yeah. like some of these other things we're about to talk about do. And it's just you just pick from it and go, and if it's available online, it automatically downloads it from the online Great. download location and sets it up. Love it. Yeah. But you know that's crossover office or crossover games, B man, and you you do have to pay some money for that. And of course, this is the Linux Action Show. I'm not against paying a little bit of money. No, you're not. Stuff, but we though. do love talking about free stuff. You know, too. The humble indie bundle comes up. I'm like, I'm buying that. Yeah. And yep. as we've shown, yep. Linux users pay a lot more money for games and good games that's than why Windows or Mac. You know, we had a we had a good Google Plus discussion thread going on this where it was like, you know, Linux users are willing to pay for good apps. And that's why I wanted to mention crossover, but. You might, before you, before you pull the trigger on that, you might check out what Play on Linux can do for you. Play on Linux was very, very, very heavily recommended on Google Plus as well. I got like 22 people yeah, telling me that. to go with this. I haven't been using this. I hadn't either. I tried it once a long time ago. Long time and ago. And it's a lot about what we just talked about. Uh, with a GUI that it walks you through a menu system to select the application you want to load, like Excel or like Internet Explorer. It's a great way to get an Explorer for web dev testing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got a like sort of a very I don't know Fedora like package manager. That's cool. You know, so you can go and you can select what you want. It could be even their code. I don't know. Uh, and it lets you some, set some of the basic things, some of the basic wine system settings. This is more of a global deal. It doesn't have the bottles, but one of one of these does. I can't remember if it's Wine Tricks or if it was uh, Play On. One of them does I support think, some form of bottles. I think Wine Tricks. I think it might be Wine Tricks because I think Wine Tricks actually. Like, under Ubuntu, I think Wine Tricks is now standard with the installation of wine. Mm. I think. Okay. So that's pretty nice. Uh, so the other cool, the other kind of nice things are is that it's all just based on uh, uh, open source software, whereas nice. Crossover is commercial closed software. This is Python. It's Bash. I mean, it's all stuff that, right. you know, if they quit making it one day, you're probably not so SOL that you couldn't get around there and tinker something and make it work for you. Uh, I don't know how exactly uh, their full application The UI support, looks nice. But really, if Wine supports job. it, this is going to get it going for you. So if, you're, if your stumbling block is just getting the thing installed and going, but you know it'll work with wine, skip crossover perhaps and try this. You know right. what I mean? Because this will get it loaded for you, get the icons created on the desktop for you and your menu, and it'll take care of a lot of the basics that if wine can get the program running, this will just get those fundamentals solved for you. That's not a bad way to Interesting. go. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm going to give this a shot. I, I, I don't foresee me stop to stop using crossover, but dude, why not see what these guys got? And they're staying on top of it. That's the other great thing is they just released uh, version 4.0 on the 17th of this month. And uh, oh, play on Mac too. Now they got so they're doing the Mac and Linux thing too. This is really interesting to see Wine take off on the Mac side, huh? Yeah. What's that about? I don't know. Kind of weirds me out a little bit. Yeah. Like I'm okay with it. I'm not against, you know. But I mean, Mac users they can have all the software they want. I'm not. They don't, they don't, I don't think anyone should be like pigeonholed so they don't get the good software. They don't, they they shouldn't they shouldn't have to do that. You should pick your know, platform you want and be able to run whatever software you want. That's how Brian feels. That said, uh, <laughs> wine, wine's our baby. Yeah, you I know. know right? I, I feel a little weird about it. I know, I know. I mean, uh, I'm okay. It's open source. I can do whatever they want. I just, it, I just feel a little weird about it. I think it's cool. It makes about, me feel dirty. Uh, play on, uh, play on Linux is. Uh, it's like, it's like when you boot up a Mac and you load up like, uh, you know, x86. Yeah, okay. You know, okay. You know, x3, and you know, you, you load it, you get the x term going, and. But then I kind of feel like I'm being a rebel. Like uh, I feel like I'm uh, fighting against the machine. I, I loaded up uh, a couple of weeks ago. I loaded up uh, Inkscape. On a Mac, and it, and it loads, loads up under X11. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. look at it, and I'm like, yeah. it loads up under X11 with kind of a funky theme. Did you just feel like you're fighting the system? I feel, uh, no, it just made me feel weird. Mm. Like, a, like, like, not like, not like dirty, violated like, weird. Like somebody got peanut butter in like, your chocolate, or yeah, like, 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 oh, oh, you know what it felt like. It felt like two things that I'm okay with got mixed together in a way I didn't like. Like, yeah. you know those jars yeah. at the grocery store that are peanut butter and jelly mixed yep. together yep. already? Yep. And you kind of wonder, because they, they aren't refrigerated, and you pop it open, and it just feels weird, yeah. and the texture's yeah. not quite right. It's like something, something we would have eaten. peanut butter and jelly, but not... Something we would have eaten on Beer is Tasty is kind of what it reminds me of. Yeah, it's just not uh, quite right. One last thing I want to mention about Play on Linux is that it also supports the 64-bit version of Wine, which is really oh, nice. That's cool. It's really nice to get that going. So, Play on Linux was, I would say, the Number one recommended Linux action show because uh, it was all over the, the Google Plus. I had it yeah. mentioned to me in the Jupiter Colony forum, so you got to check that out. That. People are using the hell out of that. But B man, but B man, what? That's 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 all fine and good, but I guess it we sure is. we shouldn't discount just straight up wine. 
Which is that's what I use. Which is really, if you've got what I find wine is good for is like if it's something that's not super dependent on the registry, and the executables are already sitting on your hard drive. It works alright. You don't have to run yeah. the setup. You just actually wine will even do the setups just fine. You know what I use wine a lot for? Hmm. I go over to like Good Old Games. I go to GOG.com because. Good old games, all of their installers are Windows-based. Mm. Even if the game runs under DOS and will run, like, loads an instance of DOSBox and everything, it's all meant for Windows users. So you run the installer under Wine, it installs everything for you, then you can copy all the DOSBox oh, stuff yeah. out and run it in your local Linux native, native DOSBox. DOSBox. Yeah, that's, so I use Wine all the time, because I'm that? always installing DOSBox-based mm -hmm. games, but that's what I use it for. So that's, that's cool. That's kind of how I how So I, uh, I guess that would fit in, though. I mean, DOS games are windows games yeah and, and I, so are you finding dos box are you finding that are you finding that native linux dos box is just are you, is there any experience differential at all no with, yeah. dos box runs great on whatever platform you're on whether you run on linux or haiku or windows or mac it doesn't matter it's dos box yeah, yeah. dos box is rad it's for running dos games and you know i i'm a classic gaming guy i like i like, you play Star Trek Online. I and, do. And, uh, you know, other people here at Jupiter Broadcasting run, like, World of Warcraft. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of people like a lot of current games. I, I feel like an old fuddy-duddy sometimes because I like games, like, from about 1995 and backwards. Well... Like, that's just kind of how I roll. Does the, uh, good old, so the good old games, uh, they've got a few games out now. All of the ones that they just are announcing are running in DOSBox? Oh, yeah, I got to show you. This so so if people grab yeah, these, they would, job, these would work on their Linux. Uh, check this out. Check this out. Switch over here. All right, switch over here. So this is what I'm currently running. Wing Commander 1 and 2 uh, runs under DOSBox. They came out with this today. Uh, all runs under DOSBox, under Linux... Ron's great. This How cool is, is this? This is one and two, dude. And dude, How dude, cool. dude. Six bucks. Six bucks. Six bucks. This is what I'm talking about. It's like one of the best games ever. Now, here's... Here, go back to this. This is, this is, this is rad. So, uh, I got this email from Good Old Games. Check that out. So, they're, they're doing a bunch of EA classics. They got, they got licenses for a lot of the old electronic arts games. These are the first two of... I don't... The audio guys, you can't see this, but uh, they've got all these question mark titles with yeah, different like, colors. Yeah, like six other titles are going to be released. Yeah. Yeah, soon, apparently. So uh, This is fun because we can get into this because cool. they run great on their Linux. And they run great. Now, they're obviously, great games. some of those games might be Windows games, and they may not run great under Wine. I suppose but they Wing could Commander be. is DOS, and it runs great yeah. under DOSBox. Also, it runs great under Wine in the Windows version of DOSBox. Oh, okay. So if you want to get really like crazy meta, you could run DOS games under DOSBox you know, in Wine for the Windows emulation on a, li a Linux desktop. The system requirements of that. Technically, you could throw Linux yeah. into a VM yeah, and run say. that on a Mac. You could do so it. You could have a Mac yeah. as your host, Linux guest, Wine, DOSBox running in Windows. Wow. And then DOS game. And then... Uh, crazy, right? Because really, the system resources on those DOS games are pretty low. Yeah, and well... Uh, again, I run a lot of these DOS games on my N900 because yeah. I have DOSBox on there, and yeah. the, the performance is not great for a lot of them. But that's just kind of kind of what I do. You know, I like to be able to play games on the go, and I like older games, so I that's what I do. I, I grab DOSBox and I play most of those games. But hmm. seriously, I I'm looking over what some of the other people's recommendations are, and the one I one I Vineyard. didn't Vineyard Vineyard was the one I was trying to remember, and it yeah the Vineyard comes up a lot. Um, I I've never used it, but I've had it. So many people recommend Vineyard to me. The the Vineyard Project, I think it's just VineyardProject.org. Yeah, I say it. That's right. Can you check that for me? I, yeah, uh, it is Vineyard. It is VineyardProject.org, and. Uh, I, I believe the bottles thing, by the way, is uh, not unique to crossover, but I don't know how to accomplish it in regular it's, wine. It's wine prefixes. Um, it's just that it there's no like good UI that I That's know. That's where of crossover to, to steps in, and, and crossover steps in and accomplishes all. Yeah, that. I think, I think I'll see if I can look it up while we. Uh, of so course, yeah, there, wine there bottles. When you search for wine bottles on Google, I, I don't think <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you don't get much many Linux results. No, no, not at all. But. Uh, that's if that is something if that if that bottles thing sounded uh, appealing to you do some do some searching around maybe somebody could leave a That's comment cool. where you could find out about that because I'm looking at it right here and I does say it supports it I just don't know how you do it yeah so, no I mean for me the only thing I really use wine for for games is to install games from goodoldgames.com extract it and well, throw the DOS box underneath crash it too says all it is just an export variable. That makes sense. That's really cool. And maybe that just crossover can flop uh, flip between them on the fly. <laughs> now one thing that's worth noting here is though is I. I am a pretty hardcore gamer. Like, I mean, I'm mostly old gamer now. Old school, Brian. But like, you know, even up to a couple of years ago, I was still playing pretty modern games, right? We're kind of at a point now where 
there's no reason to have a Linux uh, or a Windows desktop anymore. Linux handles it. Mm -hmm. like, like seriously, for the games, games you want, or for the games for the games that I want, and yeah. the games most people want. You play Star Trek Online. Yeah, I think it's there's a current modern good looking game. It is, but there's World always of Warcraft, that Warcraft, Star Trek Online, all these games. There's always great. like that Civilization Five big I think, splash, like you know, like the November or whatever, where there's all the Christmas titles that drop, and then like you have like a three month leg before they really before it runs good under one. Yeah. But I mean, really. So if it's, but no, it's, it's for but me, that's fine. Oh, yeah, that's no problem. But for a lot of people, that's killer. But you know what? I played, so when I was playing Star Trek Online, you could play that literally pretty much the day it launched. There was a couple of weird text issues, like mm -hmm. it didn't display quite right mm -hmm. all the time, but it mm -hmm. was really close. It's because people had gotten champions working, I think. So I think it was a lot of the same that's effort that's that went true. in there. But what I'm saying is, like, there's really, like, I, I have Windows on machines, but I find yeah. I use them less and less. Because, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, because Wine covers all the Windows apps I needed anyway. I'm down to... And games-wise, I, I just... I never need to boot... I don't remember the last yeah. time I installed Windows in order to play a game. When did I do that? I can't remember. Like, when I needed... When I was sitting around going, man, I wish I could play this game because that's, only uh, I only Windows, so I better install Windows. I, I like, never thought about I, like, play Stowe, and then I play games on my tab. Yeah. That's kind of like my, my gaming range now. Yeah, and, and I do mostly And then, like, box, every now so. and then I do a few of these, like... Uh, uh, you know, something grabs my attention. I'm like, oh, I'll get, and I get it run, run under wine, and then I play it for two days, and I stop. Then again, I'm probably the wrong person to ask about it, because most of my games play fine under uh, PC, BSD, and Haiku also, because without wine, because I do all the DOSBox stuff true. for like 90% of my games. That's true. So it doesn't matter. All right. I, I, maybe, maybe I'm the wrong person, but I'd like, to, I'd like to hear from you guys. You know, if you're using something different wow. than one of these things. Look at this, dude. Look at this. Odyssey Studio in the chat room, the live Linux Action wine Show chat things. room, has already hooked us up with the wine bottles information. So I will include a link to that in the show notes yeah, for just prefixes. good old right. vanilla wine you, and dude. its bottle support. So yeah, you use wine prefixes. Check out the. the I like that. I like the. I like the. Article on I like it. the idea of bottles better. It sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah, it's wine a, bottles. I like. I like the idea of drinking while I, while I game. Yeah, probably because I often do. Probably because you often do. All right, B man, that's our look at Linux ga or Windows gaming on Linux, and let us know what you guys do in the comments. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of this week's epic, mega, spectacular broadcast. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Thank uh, you. Again, it was, it was at a little different time this week, so we recorded on Thursday night. The show true. comes out on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That means if something crazy happened, like, I don't know, Hewlett Packard deciding to destroy an entire platform again, or, oh, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, maybe IBM's going to come along and announce that they're going to stop doing technology things and just sell ice cream, yeah. which would be just as crazy as what HP did last week. Um, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss it, and don't. Give us a hard time about it. But we'll it. be back on our regular schedule time next back. week. We're going to be back on Sunday starting next week. So yeah. that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. We're going to be down at the Panarcade Expo this Sunday. Uh -huh. So if you guys want to hook up with any of the Jupiter Broadcasting crew, hit us up over on the Google Plus and the Facebooks and the Twitters. You'll find us. There's links over in the show notes and on the website. Hey, you know. It's fantastic. Before we wrap, I want to say you struck a chord with the folks last week. On the uh, on That's the right. open mobile platform OS, I, you know, I've been seeing a lot of comments on. I that. I was pleasantly surprised. So I was talking about how much I would love just a nice place to go where I could get, let's say, uh, pre pre built images to run Debian mm -hmm. with driver support for a set of, you know, even just a couple of devices. How cool would it be to say N900 yeah, like, and touchpad and a couple of other Maybe devices, like a Nexus S or something. A Nexus S and just throw Debian on there so I could run XFCE. That'd be great. I would love that. Uh, you know, uh, load up a, a full a Hindle full or if I, what is it? Uh, uh, Not Hindle. Uh, 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 Hilden, Hilden as a UI. You know, throw whatever UI on there. Uh, KDE Mobile. Mm -hmm. Oh man, the KDE guys are doing some really killer stuff for the mobile space. Uh, actually, Kubuntu uh, 1104 1110 is going to have some really killer mobile stuff, it looks like. And so how cool would it be to just have a set of hardware where you could just load this stuff from the repo and get it on there? Maybe it wouldn't What's be great that? for a consumer OS. No, it's good for geeks, Maybe, though. But yeah, exactly. It's, you're not going to load this up for your mom or your cousin uh, Matilda or any of these sorts of people. Chris has a cousin Matilda, I bet. No. But, but you're just going to you're just gonna load them up yourself. Let's I'll take that bet. And you're enjoy running, you know, <laughs> G-Edit and yeah. Conquer and all the other things you want to run on it. Dude, people are people like all about it. People freaked out about it and and so so did I so this is totally happening we're still trying to come up with a name for it because it's only four days since we uh, we talked about it but the prevailing That's wisdom true. is that it should be called Lunduk which uh, that sounds like wisdom makes me feel weird I'm gonna be honest I love 
things being named after Although, me. Although, I'll, I'll tell you, you're, uh, you're going to kill your uh, Google juice. This is the problem. Right? You know what I'm saying? Because you know, they're going to, it's going to eventually, if it does well, it's going it's to bury me. you. Yeah. So then you're going to search for my name, which right now, I'm the only person on the internet with my name. It's because you invented it. Because I invented my name. Yeah. Uh, now, so you search for Lunduke, boom, you have like a billion en entries, and they're just, just me. Just you. So if you type in Lunduke, however many Bing results you get, it's even like 100% me. Even like Lunduke OS or Lunduke Mobile. It might be better, yeah. But so, no, I still, you get Lunduke, gonna, there's going to tank you, like Google juice. It might be so better, we've though. We've talked about things from Luminous to a bunch of other different things, but really, it's it's it doesn't matter what it's called. It could be called Mr. Poopy Frozen on a you Stick, know, and it would still be awesome because it would be, you know, a great... Debian install, uh, throwing on a bunch of devices. So this is definitely happening. We're gonna get uh, That's we're gonna get cool. some servers set up uh, over the next week or so. We're gonna get some repositories going, so we can really kind of get some testing going on. What devices we're gonna support? Uh, you know, it's really up to the community. You know, if a lot of people need support for devices and are willing to work on it, we'll get more support for devices. So you know how so I'm gonna be working on the N900 and a few other things to start with because those are what I need. So how but we'll go from there. So I guess probably what the colony or something. How people? Yeah, you know, go over the Jupiter colony. I'll also blog about it over. At Lunduke.com, uh, which is not going to be just called Lunduke, guys. But if you go to my blog at Lunduke.com, I'll, I'll blog about it or Google Plus or Twitter, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you guys. You guys will find out. One last note is, you know, last weekend was our birthday episode because we were shooting that on Sunday. Now we're yes, shooting indeed. this one on Thursday, but today is technically, I think, the day, right? Today's the day? 25th, 24th was it today or yesterday? Oh, snaps! It was either yesterday. I today. think it's yeah. today. I think my. Uh, I think it's today. I and didn't realize that. One of the little tidbits that you know, we all pretty. Are, I think we're all probably pretty familiar. How Linus, when he first when he first released Linux, he thought you know it's a 386 box. It's never going to work on anything but ATA drives. Don't bother yeah. get or you know it's not going to go beyond SCSI. And uh, one of the things I didn't realize is how it actually got called Linux. Is I my, this is my rough following of it? Is that when uh, Linus was uploading it to an FTP server that his buddy ran, uh, he was oh here's that Linux course uh, Linux uh, or Linux source code tree here. I'll just name this folder here, and he named it Linux. And when his buddy named the folder Linux for him to upload the source code into, that's just the name that stuck. So, just some guy named the folder Linux, and that's how we got the name. That's awesome. <laughs> so ruminate on that. Twenty years later, it's rocking it. How about Man, that? So what you're saying is, I should really make sure I name this o this this OS and platform before someone else jumps well, the gun. And I does guess it I'm for saying me. I'm I'm saying so. You know, uh, I don't think Linus got all too wrapped up in the name. And yeah. it still worked it's, out okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's for nerds anyway. We're not going to go have big billboards and commercials for this sort of thing. We're not going for world. You never know, man. Don't we say that. You never know. Somebody will play nerdiness. this back and be like, remember when you said that? I just want some nerdiness that I can load both XFCE and KDE Mobile on yeah. the same thing and, and hop back and forth to play with them on whatever mobile device Reaper I want. Reaper reminds me in the chat room that uh, Linus was really gonna call, originally going to call it Freaks with an X at the end. So that was what I, I think I'll take Linux over Freaks. Yeah, because I don't Linux think it's way better name than Freaks. Oh, you use that Freaks OS? That's weird. I can yeah. see that. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, whew, dodged a bullet on that one, guys. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Linux Action Show, and we'll see you right back here next Sunday. Next Sunday. Wait, wait, do I do it? Yes! Oh, okay, okay. You go, man. What's new in the news this week? Oh!